Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to our webinar today. Um, it's really great to um, see that we're having another one of these um, events. Seems like it's been a little while, so we hope that you've had a really good summer. Um, you wouldn't look at it today and think we've had a summer, would you? We've not had such great weather recently. But uh, yeah, I hope you all managed to get some time to relax over the summer period. Um, as most of you know, I just got through some housekeeping first of all. Um, many of you will be familiar with this. But we always say that to get the best experience from these webinars, you are better to use Google Chrome if you have that. And if you do have any technical issues, generally, if you press refresh, that does normally rectify the problem. So hopefully we'll, we'll all be good. Let's hope so anyway. Just a reminder for everybody as well that the sessions are uh, recorded and that enables people to watch them again later on. Um, some people like to share them in team meetings, etc. Or if you've got colleagues that have missed it today and you think it'll be useful for them to watch later, you can find these on our YouTube channel. We would encourage you to um, introduce yourselves um, through our chat function. It's always nice to see um, familiar names and also new names coming on. And if you could just say where you are as well, even though we're not kind of physically meeting up, it's quite nice to still use that chat function as, a, as an opportunity to network with others that are engaging with us today. And also just to ask that you uh, place any questions that you might have as we go through the session uh, in the questions tab, and we will pick them up um, as we go through the session today as well. Just to say as well, it's great to, uh, to note that we've got five new members to the Good Employment Charter since our last webinar. Um, and they're listed there in our slide. And also, um, we know we've had 52 new supporters as well. So the message about the Good Employment Charter is clearly getting out there. So uh, it's great to have more employers on, uh, on board with us. So as, as you know, when you signed up for this event, that today we're going to focus on the importance of the uh, employee voice. And in particular, how employers can utilize virtual techniques of receiving employee feedback you know, looking at how you can analyze, gather that data, and more importantly for all of us, how you act upon that information as well. Just to set a little bit of context as well, um, you know, we all know that the last 18 months have been uh, very, very challenging to say the least. And I think everybody could say that it's difficult enough just keeping up with the day job. It, it, it can be a real struggle. Um, we've all got increasing demands. We're all juggling so much at the moment. And often, one of the most important aspects of our work role can kind of drop down the priority list, and that is about communication. So if anything, you know, we all know that the pandemic, it made us realise the importance of feeling connected to our organisations um, and to each other as well, and whether that was to the organisation as a whole or to the teams that we work with in. And I think what we've shown through the pandemic as well is that we have got an incredible um, resilience and we're really good at adapting and trying to work in different um, circumstances. I think one of the things as well is that um, communication and in particular hearing and acting upon employee voice helps us all to perform better. And I think everybody would agree that if you feel that you're being heard and that you're being listened to, and things are being acted upon, that really does help to impact positively on your mental health and well-being. So during the webinar today, we're going to hear about a different approach to capturing the um, employee voice. And, and also we're going to hear about how that's impacted upon the culture of an organisation that's a, a diverse organisation as well. So I'm absolutely delighted that today we've got a, a really good panel yet again. Um, you know, we've got the good friends of the charter as well. We've got Michael Brennan, who is the CEO and co-founder of Stribe. Now, I'm not going to say too much about Stribe because I don't want to steal Michael's thunder. <laughs> and we've also got Louise Brown, who's the vice principal at Wigan and Lee College. So first of all, I'm going to go to Michael with a question just to kind of kick things off for us. So Michael, um, you know, we think you were slightly ahead of the game in developing Stribe because you could never ever have predicted the, the, the pandemic and how that's impacted the way that we work, um, you know, across our organisation. So can you tell us a little bit about Stribe, what it is, but also what observations you had made that actually prompted you to develop this particular product? 
Love to, Carol. And thank you so, so much for, for having us. I really do appreciate it. And employee voice is extremely close to my heart. So it's wonderful to be here and to be able to speak openly about what we do to such a wide audience and looking forward to hearing Louise's part as well in terms of turning that into action and feedback. But to answer your question, um, we originally developed um, the world's first engagement and well-being app for children and young people in schools. And it was very much focused around trying to get more regular um, feedback and listen to the voice of young people in the school environment. And I realized that if you wanted to make those big macro priorities change, such as engagement, um, increase of, of, of retention of young people in what they're doing, uh, increasing attainment, then we needed to look at the micro parts at the other end. We needed to listen to those young people at the earliest opportunity. Um, and so across seven years, we effectively honed in our schools using technology that enabled young people to have that voice in a more regular way. And equally at the back of that, we enabled the ability to group big data sets together to help to start to understand some of those trends and those themes uh, really quickly. Um, and whilst doing that, we were approached by Wigan Council and Barclays Bank and a number of other providers who were very, very interested in well before the pandemic in trying to find um, a more regular way to listen to the voice of employees. Um, and what I would say is, in terms of those early observations, it was very much the time where it was almost expected that the, the voice of the employee was going to be negative issues. It was going to be about kind of trying to raise some of those problems and concerns and that, that could get to the HR department that could then hopefully make a difference. And mm -hmm. how could we reduce those numbers of grievances and how could we increase staff retention? Um, how, how could we reduce stress-related absence? Um, and so we came at it from a very, very blank canvas, which was really exciting for us to be able to say, well, what is out there at the minute in terms of organizations being able to listen to the voice of their employees and it was really really simple in terms of most organizations had an annual survey and that annual survey was provided in many different forms whether that be sort of a group of organizations um, in the form of best companies or I iip um, or that could be in different platform providers like your pecons your culture ramp your glints your hives everything kind of being able to get that survey survey monkey um, but that's where it stopped. Um, that's where you could get that insight and that feedback. But then it was a very, very long time and a lot of data points because there were so many questions to work through in which you could start to change the needle of some of these stats. And for us, it was about, well, how could we become the glue? There was a big missing piece between the kind of big annual survey movements, the sort of stop and start. And we wanted to find a way to not only create regular um, feedback loops we want to be able to do that quickly but we also wanted to drive incremental change we wanted to make something happen with our system we want we didn't want to be kind of a data point say fantastic there's a score now what do we do with this we really wanted to help the organizations to go on that journey and for me there was a key part missing in the jigsaw of employee voice and that was two-way feedback so we do a lot of asking a lot of pushing um, but most organizations don't necessarily mean to or forget to do this, which is to listen to their employees and to have the ability for the employees to have that two-way conversation. And that comes in two forms, physically enabling an individual to have a voice and say something into your organization. And the other way in which you can do that is speeding the process up. If you can start to pulse individual questions that are targeted to the whole organization or around groups of staff or problems, then you can start to make uh, assumptions you can start to understand different groups of people's needs and you can support them in different ways and i think that's where this realization of of, of one shoe size does not fit, mm. fit every size of feet anymore um and so we, we we went into the pandemic with these principles of building out stride and working closely with very proactive organizations um and ultimately at that point we'd partnered with with louise and the good employment charter and, and wigan and lee college and, and it was just at the point where the pandemic had hit. And it, we were very, very fortunate in that aspect that we'd actually developed a platform that supported organizations to very, very quickly be able to get feedback from different groups of staff. Um, and we, we put real emphasis on understanding how employees work. And I think a lot of big annual um, survey systems or survey uh, processes they don't really think about the employee and the, the experience of the employee. And what I mean by that is most are sent out via an email link and you therefore have to make sure all of your employees, whether they're working in office, whether they're working remotely, whether they're working on the field, have the ability to respond to that survey in some way, shape or form. And for us was if we wanted to drive incremental change and capture the whole voice of the organization, 
we had to understand how employees would interact with questions being asked. So we had a, a plethora of, of um, ways in which employees could interact, whether that be via the email to respond to questions, whether that be via an app on iOS or Android that people could download onto their phones, and whether that be QR codes for even staff that have their own device but aren't connected to the network have a way to communicate back into the organization. So we really focused on that. Um, and we focused on being able to support organizations in a structure of introducing individual questions or small groups of questions that could happen more quickly so that you could start to target and understand really how people were feeling, understand what their needs were. And ultimately, which was really, really important in this process, I'm sure Louise will mention, is being able to feed back to your people what you're doing with their data, with their opinions, with their needs. And there's a big you know, 360 degree feedback loop missing for a lot of organizations, which we call, you know, you said we did, um, which was ultimately you ask a question, you need to thank them for their data and you need to tell them what you are or are not doing with their insights. And that's on the outside appears to be quite a, a scary thing to say back to teams and staff, but actually it breaks down into two very, very simple flows, which is what can you do today? There are certain things that are tangible, you know, enough tea bags in the staff room, the right technology at home if you're working in a hybrid workforce. All of these little things add up to an employee's engagement experience and ultimate well-being score. And whilst that's happening on the kind of micro level of those quick insights and changes that you can make a difference with, you can put tea bags back into the staff room, you can give your staff a laptop from home, you can give pens and whiteboards out to teachers regardless of where they're working. There's a bigger picture at play. There's a bigger strategy. There's a bigger culture. There's a bigger process. There's an engagement process that all of this can feed into, which is ultimately the same process that you were doing with your annual surveys. But now you have those incremental um, insights and bits of feedback so that very, very quickly you can change the direction of the boat <laughs> if it's sailing slightly off course as to what your people are thinking and feeling. Um, and, and within Stribe, in terms of going into the detail, there's lots of functionality that feeds into that platform. So once you identify how your staff are feeling via asking questions or via listening through the employee voice, so having a way for staff to just say how they're feeling without being prompted is really, really important to suggest ideas, to crowdsource ideas or to raise concerns if nobody's seeing this. But the other two parts are then in, into the kind of the observations of the pandemic, which is people were starting to struggle with motivation, feeling connected and being engaged. So we started to introduce um, what we call shout outs, which was the ability to allow people on grassroots level, on the front line, to say thank you to one another, to celebrate those little moments with one another. So that not only are you understanding how people are feeling and you're changing their environment for them by putting the things in place that they need, you're also able to have a, an observation of how your people are working together and communicating, which as we'll discuss I'm sure today, is so, so important from that kind of hybrid working point of view and that remote working point of view. We still need to have this team's feeling of being in the office, but we can't always have that now and in the future. And then the final point that I would mention this whole process. So once you understand how your staff are feeling and thinking, how do you ensure that they're engaged in the journey and continue to come with you? And then a lot of the points you put in place is your actions will come with resources. So if there's well-being topics and questions that you're asking how your people are thinking and feeling, there has to be an action in which you're sharing something back to support your people as a result of how they're thinking and feeling. And so we created smart resource hubs that allows the organization to upload whatever resources, policies, information, videos that they want to share, but it has to be targeted because previously it's been internet sites or a handbook or bits of information that gets lost in piles and piles of work. And what we wanted to be able to do was just give micro bite-sized information that was related to its own organization. So Wigan and Lee College will have very different resources to what Bolton Council will, for example, or, or MAPS group that work with us. But it's about making that environment suit your individual needs. So my observations were very much that I think everyone understands the importance of employee voice and, and being able to listen to staff. I think that there was a lot of tools and a big gap in terms of how you do that in a regular and simple way that can ultimately be driven by data. And that's what we decided to do with Stripe. I think that's brilliant. And and I think there are a few things there that you touched on that I can resonate with as well. And I'm sure lots of people can where you've been in organizations where surveys have been conducted and you know you, you feel a little bit disillusioned because you, you don't quite know what the 
whole purpose of that survey is because you never really see anything come out of them at the end of the day and it feels it might just feel a bit like a something that has to be done and it's done to you rather than you being involved in it and I think it's great that the way that you've developed things you are trying to shift away from those negative connotations that are associated with employee feedback in that it isn't about raising problems all the time it's about ideas and solutions and and the most important thing like you've said is about driving change and I love you know I love the kind of you said we did and sometimes it's we couldn't isn't it um, and as long as people understand that as well that's that's equally important and and I think the fact that you know you, you're you're enabling people to um, adapt something for their own organizations it's bespoke and you're capturing the mood in a live kind of real-time way um, just allows teams uh, management senior teams to be more responsive and to be able to act on them that, that keeps employees motivated they feel that they're being heard and the shout outs I absolutely love that idea because when you're working like remotely yeah I think we all felt I felt that disconnect at times because it's not quite the same is it as when you're in an office and somebody's kind of shouts across the room well done for something or you know kind of gives you a pat on the back or whatever they're all the things that we are missing but are becoming so much more important to recognize as we go forward so yeah that's that's really 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 um, interesting and yeah I love it so it'd be interesting to hear from Louise now Louise you know kind of you've obviously um trialed uh, and used um Strive and you've you know you've had the opportunity to use it during that very very challenging period particularly as you've mentioned uh, at the start of the pandemic um and obviously for you you've got a diverse workforce where obviously you're trying to make people people feel connected and involved etc so can you tell us a bit about how you went about implementing stribe and from the way that you've done that how has it influenced you know your direction and changed the way in which you are now starting to engage with your workforce yeah of course carol and uh, thank you again for inviting me along today to um, have a chat about this um, I think employee engagement um, and employee vo voice a fundamental pillar of employee engagement had, had been recognised here at the college um, for a, a long time and how that can actually be the critical success factor in an organisation um, you know and drive forward that high performing um, organisation and we'd uh, as a college, and, and I'll get the uh, plug in now, poorly funded FE colleges, uh, but we weren't uh, uh, um, flush with the funding, so to speak, to, to throw at an, anything like this. So we set about, um, myself and, and Joe and the, the HR team, looking at what ways on a shoestring budget can we collect our employee voice? Can we, um, um, uh, you know, think of creative ways that, that were going to cost a fortune uh, to do this. We did our standard surveys as everybody else and I do think they have an important part to play. Yes, they can get stale, but they do give you that measure and if, if you're, you're doing it in a structured way, you, you can see periodically through um, points at, at where you, you're driving forward improvements uh, and where you maybe need to target. So we'd looked at lots of different methods of, of things and a particularly um, successful one for us was around focus groups whereby myself and the principal three times a year periodically went and sat with groups of staff this was pre-pandemic um, and um, sat there and said okay tell, tell us what it's like to work here good things and bad things give us your ideas and and at first we sat in a room with a, a group of very quiet people who were thinking oh, i'm not saying anything here my card will be marked that type of thing but as we continued to work through this and it did take time then people started to see that actually things good things come out of this group and actually it doesn't matter what you say as long as everybody's respectful of course whatever you you said in that forum um was 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 valid and whether it could be acted upon or, or not feedback came through and we did the uh, you said we did an end of year newsletter that really closed that feedback loop so very quickly staff um representatives who were in these these groups um started to capture information from their colleagues 
and we got a bit of momentum going and I think that was a real step change for us um, in, in culturally as well, building that, that trust, um, uh, that honest and open relationship that, you know what, all we want to do is do a great job here, do a great job for our students because that's what we're all here for, but actually make this a great place to work, make it enjoyable at the same time um, and all this was feeding into there. But we recognised there was more we could we could do there, um, and some of the uh, you know the way we were doing that it was quite a, a heavy administrative burden. It could be a bit cumbersome at times, and how you're trying to decipher and collect information, and it, it, you know as as to pulling out the key points of that. And you know for a long time I thought there must be a way here. There, there must be something that's pressing a button like that that we can capture this information re readily, quickly um, and in a, a much easier format to, to, to do something with. And then along came Stribe um, and we were introduced to uh, Ma Michael through the charter um, and as soon as I had a discussion uh, with Michael, I was very quickly for, for me recognised, you know what, this, this could and I'm not exaggerating, this could be amazing here. It could make our life so much easier in collecting and, and trying to do this. It could push us forward very quickly on our engagement uh, journey and really make the thought that, that change within our organisation. So we'd set about um, implementing this and working with Michael um, and then along came the pandemic. So if, if ever there was a, a time to actually put this into play very, very quickly to see whether um, what, what we thought would be a great tool um, actually in reality um, would do what we wanted it to do. And my goodness, it absolutely did. We were thrust into um, a dispersed workforce where as a college we didn't have any form of home working as you'd imagine because pre-pandemic lots of organisations had never even thought about that and, and it felt very quickly like you had to stick your laptop under your arm and off you went and what do we do now? We're teaching kids from living rooms, bedrooms, kitchens, what, you know, how do I get hold of that person? How do we, how do we manage our day-to-day -day operations? We quickly managed that, but then we thought, gosh, look, this is so important now that we've got to remain connected. And we didn't want to lose the ground either in, in what we'd done in our, our engagement um, and, and the buy-in there um, that, that we had with, with staff. So we used uh, Stribe um, in a, in a variety of ways um, from the start from when we were in lockdown but also as we started to gently reintegrate back, back in and get people in, in uh, the workplace so from a variety of things around the people feel safe with questions you could very quickly test the temperature as I describe it as the organisation you can immediately get back that whilst it's confidential what's, what's fed back if you, you're feeding it in a particular way um, you, you can identify if there's a particular site. We, we have a number of sites across both Wigan and Lee um, and you could identify if you've got a particular issue on one site. You can drill down, it can help you, you really manipulate your, your data and the information that you be, that's being collected so that um, you can then, then act on that. Um, I do think it helped us because I, I think we were in a strong position from a, a, an engagement with our, our staff. They um, love the idea of, of the app. It's on the phone, it's on your computer, it's on your phone, it's easy, it's press a button, it's a smiley face, it's like TripAdvisor if you want to describe it like that from time to time. But it is so easy to engage with. And you know what? It, it's nice, it's friendly, it's, um, you know, the shout outs, different things like that. We were, we were worried about recognition because we'd played, that was a real um, important part in our strategy as well about thanking people, recognising where people have gone above and beyond, recognising for, you know, key key achievements. And we'd, we'd have quite 
I'll say grand events. They're probably not grand to anybody else. We're in our refectory, and I, I rustle up a, um, a few biscuits and a, a, an odd bunch of flowers and a bottle of bubbly. But do you know what? They're so, they were such successful events. We ran regularly doing some staff awards with print off a certificate. And do you know what? You'd think they'd won the lottery, some of the teams, when, when they were awarded that. And uh, we couldn't do that. We, couldn't, we haven't been able to do that for, uh, you, you know, coming up to two years now. But the fact that you can recognise staff and teams in a way through using the, the Stribe app, because it didn't really cut the mustard me on, on online trying to say, and, and the winner is such a body, and uh, it just sat there. It was just really, really difficult. Um, so again, it's from, from the positive side of things, not only capturing, how can we help? Have you got the tools you need to work at home? How do you feel about coming back into the workplace? How do you feel about hybrid working or commitment to continuing that? How do you feel about remodeled staff spaces? What can you do to, how can we help? What can make your work life balance better? What can make your day to day coming into work better? All these, these types of things we can very, very quickly capture that and, and feed that into, into our strategy. So I probably talked way, way around lots of things uh, there, but it's such a, an exciting and interesting topic. Yeah. And there's so much that, that you can do. A lot of people say to me, because I am quite passionate about this, because I really do believe that um, engaging staff unlocks so much uh, in an organization. And people say to me, well, how do you know? You, you, you got, you're saying, oh, staff are happy, they, you know, uh, they're engaged, everything's hunky dory. But we've 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 kept those external measures go, going on as well. So we've been the best companies. We'd entered that previously, we've entered again and it, you know, we've had some significant improvements in um in that and being recognised on some of those lists as well as the the questions that we asked two years ago on our our staff surveys and the things that uh, were were coming back there so in that period from sort of 2019 to 2021 currently um, uh, we had a significant rise around about 10 percent in communication is affected in the college now that's counterintuitive really when you think we're in the pandemic and there was people at home there's people who have stepped foot over the college threshold for a year but to, to make some some of those big leaps like that um, and you know the college things like having a, a the college proud to work for the college having a good future all those engagement measures are, you know are way way up in the 90s a uh, percent so there's external measures there it's not just me sat here saying oh this is wonderful just uh, you know i think everybody has a happy day at Wigan and Lee College of course we have the problems and everything but there's some real strong measures there that for me are those that, that that tell us that what we did there, how we've managed through that stride being a fundamental tool of that has has helped us weather this mighty storm that, that we've faced as as I humanity. Know. Oh, it definitely is a mighty storm, <laughs> but but it's great in that you've not thrown everything out of the you know out the window as it were in terms of what you were doing before with employee engagement as well. This is this is complementing it and actually might be filling in some of the gaps as well. But perhaps what it's enabled you to do is to to really like that drill down, isn't it? And getting things on that with the pulse, especially through the pandemic and knowing that people have been feeling anxious, probably use it to help to inform return to work plans, etc. So, you know, it's great to hear that it's, it is complementary and it doesn't mean that people have to start all over again, they just build. They could just build upon things that they've already got in place. Ab absolutely, we continue continuing with our focus groups, for example. Um, uh, you know, we 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 still do that, um, and, and a lot of the uh, the other measures. I think the key the keys with the the app with Stribe is that responsiveness, that very quick opportunity yeah. to get out there so the times when you you as an organization as a, as a leader in an organization there's many times that you think you're picking up something on the grapevine somebody says something you just think do you know what we need to find a little bit more out about that so you can target a question 
um, very quickly. You can get quick responses back. You can then drill down um, uh, beneath that. Also for us, we used it as, as part of our um, themed activities around our whole wellbeing strategy for staff. So, it, you know, things like we have uh, wellbeing Wednesday, fun Friday, um, I can't remember what Monday is at the moment. If Joe, Joe might put it in the chat in a moment. Joe, what what's the Monday? Um, so we, we we've got these um, these themes uh, going there and and use uh, Stripe as as the application to to push out the questions and promote things. Motivation Monday. That's it. Joe's coming on the chat. Thanks very much, Joe. Um, so all those things it, it helps feed into that wider wellbeing strategy. Um, that that we have there, and uh, that's been great for that uh, to to really keep that going, particularly in the pandemic. Brilliant. We we have had a question, and I'm going to direct this question to Louise first of all. But Michael, you might want to come in on it too. So um, I've had a question from Peter. Just basically, he's, he's saying that it's a bit surprising that the role of independent trade unions hasn't been mentioned. Um, do the panellists worry that Stribe might undermine traditional collective bargaining mechanisms? And obviously, Louise, I know that you do have, you know, obviously um, those arrangements in place. Do you do you worry that it might undermine those processes? Uh, I don't. I don't worry. It's a good uh, question, Peter. Um, we, as part of all these measures, we meet regularly with our trade union colleagues. Um, and uh, work with them on that. We might share information that we're pushing out on Stribe. They all uh, we shared with them when we were um, looking at initially implementing uh, this. So we have those regular focus groups, as well as you might have your formal consultation frameworks, depending on what organisation you work for. Um, we as an organisation also have our informal um, it's like a focus group just with our trade union colleagues and they're held um, at the same regular intervals, if not more often actually, than the focus groups. So they just complement each other um, and as certainly the feedback I get is they're great supporters of Stride because they, they see the value of that to their members out there uh, in the workforce and their ability to, to put forward information um, in that way if they wish to do so but it hasn't replaced any of those that they just run alongside and, and uh, uh, sort of dovetail together really. Oh that's brilliant and Michael have you found that from other organisations that you've that you've worked with that also have arrangements with trade unions? Yeah so a prime example I think one of your or members or supporters Bolton Council have also in the process of rolling out to six and a half thousand staff and a, and a key process journey was sharing with all the different trade unions as part of that process and what became very very apparent was everybody was quite aligned in the fact of making sure that the people in the organization were happy safe and engaged um, as part of that process so this tool becomes that kind of glue and that validation to and identify some of those areas so as Louise says it becomes that umbrella of, of, of the organization to understand how people are thinking and feeling really really quickly and actually some of the discussions that we've had and, and how can trade union representatives and, and supporters be part of this journey they may have some questions they'd want to include as part of that and, and, and it becomes part of that step-by-step -step, uh, change process where we're, hopefully trade union organizations in particular in the public sector area are on that same journey together and want to work hand in hand for the common good of people um, and ultimately some of those big metrics that Louise has been able to change around kind of an increase in staff retention and a reduction in stress related absence rates as a result of listening to their employees in a more regular way mm -hmm. can only be good for people. Um, in terms of our vision, um, we, we want people to be happier and safer in their daily working life and we want to drive that incremental change. So I would hope that between trained union and organisation, those incremental changes are agreed together or are supported together or are discussed. Um, and our application is only as good as the people like Louise and the teams that are in place to, to, to make that happen. The danger of a system like this is you can listen to your stuff more regularly and you can do less with it. Um, and therefore, we're going to have a bigger challenge of engagement because you're going to speed up that process of not listening to your staff or potentially creating an environment in which um, engagement decreases. So mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, hopefully that answers the question, Peter. I think from our point of view, we, we, we see everyone as a collective in terms of understanding how they're feeling. But from that data analytics point of view, as Louise mentioned, that granularity of understanding groups of people's feelings and thoughts can be quite powerful for both parties to work together. Um, yeah. but, 
but we listen to our customers. We're only as good as our customers' feedback. So everything I've talked through today is my wonderful team, Lucy Harvey and Kieran Ennis and, uh, and myself, have just, we've just listened. Um, we, we, we understood some observations and some problems and, and, and we go for it and we think there's a, a real area to support people. Um, our, our, we believe that when people are heard, teams are happy. So everything has to feed into that mantra and that, and that mission statement. And, and then the rest comes from the real problems that, that, that leaders of, of people are, are trying to overcome right now. I, I have a, a team of 10 and I'm doing my best to look after them, let alone 500, 5,000 that comes with that. So what this tool does is the larger organization becomes the, 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 the better data and insights that you may be um, armed with to be able to support larger groups of those people that may once have not had a voice regardless of where they're working. Yeah, no, that's really good. Yeah, and hopefully, Peter, that that has uh, assured you that, you know, uh, the, the roles of trade unions are, are greatly valued in all of the work that we do, um, with, and especially with the employees that they're working with as mm-hmm. well. I, I was going to ask another quick question as well. Um, and we alluded earlier on to kind of some of the HR issues that crop up um, through com- some of the surveys, but also through, through Joe's comments as well about the anonymized function. Do, do you find that people feel comfortable to raise difficult things? And do you feel that it, because of that functionality and the fact that it's uh, quick to re- enable you to respond quickly, that you can act on things more promptly rather than waiting through to go through a, a kind of more protracted process mm. perhaps, or hear things on the grapevine, like you've said? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there's a, a couple of points there. Um, I do believe with um, the mechanisms that we had in place that we'd sort of got, got over, uh, got to the point where um, we had a high level of trust within the organisation. Uh, they felt comfortable being open and honest and talking to us um, because I think, and I do, but I, I stand by this, actions do are, are louder than, than words really aren't they and, and it, it, when we set off on this journey it was really really important to us that even if things were being brought forward uh, to us and we couldn't act on them for whatever reason that may, might be but we talk to people and we tell them why you, you know some some decisions might not be as palatable to some people than others but we would talk to them as, as, as adults and, and openly and hopefully enable them to understand why we'd taken a particular approach so we've been doing that for quite a long a long time so i think then we introduced strive um, and that carried on because they saw it as another one of these trusted measures as a variety of them um, that, that we've managed to develop and, and build up so I, you know i think if, if people are, are engaging with with strive it might be that you, you've got to give it time um uh, you know there will be quick fixes some of those hygiene factors and you'll you'll get a quick bounce off that but you know ultimately it's like culture it's like turning a tanker against the tide isn't it for if, if you're, you're honest if you're really doing a a big culture change at role so uh, i think anybody that enters into this need, needs to understand that they need to be in it for the certainly for the medium term the, there will be a quick bounce on that but in order to get the best out of it you've got to keep keep going at it and have have that that sort of uh, planned planned uh, approach but um i've forgotten the second part of your question carol i've sort of read it, written it down michael like you were saying <laughs> <laughs> but I, think, it, I think you've covered it louise is it? It, yeah you have covered I, it i was i was going to build on louise's point about about trust and, and, and the ability to be anonymous the, the system was built in two two ways some people want to have their say and are quite happy to put their name against that and be really really forthcoming which is important but it's be able to try and reach those hard to reach groups or those areas of staff that may not be able to speak up in those areas they may have mm-hmm. managers that they feel that don't listen to them so it's mm-hmm. about being able to provide that support mechanism and it's the start of the journey this is this is one tool we're a jigsaw a face-to-face conversation and the external support that can come we're right in the middle of that kind of tool belt um and and and, and trust is key if people feel that they can start to speak up and have their view and they see change, then they become engagement advocates. They they want to help, they want to support and they start to turn the ship faster with you. So it's about getting everybody on board. And like I always say, that the, the, the tool, particularly in kind of that quantitative feedback, so when people give their real uh, feelings, their, their rants, their comments, their suggestions, 
you can you can see the trends through word clouds and groupings of those comments and i would say sometimes that's more valuable than what is the, the you know pressing the emoji the yes or no or the multiple choice of an answer it's about truly listening to those needs because mm. there is something there that actually if we can unpick that probably affects 10 percent yeah. of the workforce and, and only one person has spoken up so you know trust in everything you do and building that trust is a huge part of that and staff engagement process and we were very lucky that Louise and, and Joe already had that in abundance so it made it very easy for us to launch quite quickly but really thinking about how you're going to engage your people what mm -hmm. they're responding to and how that feedback loop's going to feed into your wider strategy is is is, is really key because technology just plays one part in that bigger piece of what is your strategy and what do you want to move the needle on yeah and it's interesting the point that nicola's made in the chat as well about you know the the importance of the employee voice and and it's sad to see that there are you know increasing numbers of individuals that haven't felt that they have been listened to through the pandemic but that that kind of listening to employees does have wider business benefits like as nicholas said about retention you know if people like i said as well earlier you know it it, it, it affects your mental health and well-being if you feel that you're not being heard. So, you know, the more that we can do to embrace ways to capture employee voice, it is very, very important. So, you know, having a tool that will help people with that immediacy as well is it, fab. But I think Nicola's got a really good point there. Um, and yeah. it's interesting that people are becoming more aware that they want to, you know, be able to have their voice heard as well. Yeah, I, I, if I, I can just come in there, because I, uh, I picked up on, the, I, I just read that by Nicola. Um, and for us, we've, we've had a, a reduction in staff turnover by about 5%. Um, and it had, it had remained at a particular level for, for a number of years. It didn't really move, move around that. And then we've had a big um a big uh sort of five percent drop in in that and we, and we put that largely down to the engagement and people wanting to work at, at Wigan and Lee College that it's a great place to work which I do believe it is but it, you know going back to the my business head because we, we might be a college but we, we still uh, are operating on a, a, a you know a, a significant 30 odd million pound business here in effect and and that's massive on your bottom line, isn't it? You, you know, not having to to uh, recruit, to lose those those key skills, the impact on student experience, the students don't come, all those those things, lots and lots of things, uh, the same way as it, it will do in in a number of organisations. So there's there's a number of business bottom line metrics that it isn't just about, and I'm sure people don't think it's some pink and fluffy and everything's lovely to to work in a particular place. There is a big, strong business case. It puts you ahead of your competitors. It can make the difference to your bottom line. You know, it is an investment that you will see if it's done properly and rolled out and that commitment there at senior level, you, you will see the benefits in abundance um, in, as an organisation. That's great. And Michael, have you heard from other organisations that have, have reported similar kind of uh, wider business benefits from purely listening to that employee voice as well yeah we, we, we we've been working with a large group of organizations for about a year now and it's been really really exciting to sort of see the the years change it, it is at least a year in terms of yeah. you get those insights and those feedbacks you make those changes we particularly through the pandemic there's been stop start stop starts and each environment of the stop start has been very different in terms of that journey and the next 12 months are going to be just the same so even starting now um, we're about to do a, a project in partnership with the, the Good Employment Charter called the City Mood Project. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be working with 10 organisations to within the city to, to pulse four questions between October through to March once a month. And they're the same four questions and they're going to have four key areas to understand how those groups of staff are thinking and feeling so that we can help influence policy and ensure that people are feeling safe as they return to the city, that they want to return to the city and that even if they're working in a hybrid way, they feel from a transport point of view that that can help them and support them so it's really understanding that wider environment but yes some of our, our other organizations in the private sector for example smaller organizations are seeing real change as a result of listening to their people they're retaining their staff more and and i know carol that for, for the audience we um we good employment charter and Wigley college uh, did a 12 months evaluation process and some of the metrics that we have talked through today is in is in a, a report that i think you're going to share after yeah. this so um everyone will get to sort of read the balance of yes technology plays one part of that but 
all of Louise's points around, you know, investing in engagement for many years, but equally really focusing on the last 12 months has, has made some incredible differences. And I'm delighted to play a very small part of that in terms of enabling the feedback to come through faster. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned the reports as well, Michael. I was going to, to mention that as well, that we will share it after the event. And also, uh, Antonia has asked about, um, which I think the, the app sounds interesting and is there a website where she can find out more? So we'll share all details of, of uh, the website as well where people can find information. Oh, you've put it on there as well. I just put it on. Um, so that's fantastic. Yeah. But we will share uh, kind of contacts, etc. Uh, after the session today. I'm just conscious that we are kind of starting to come towards the close and just wanted to just to check if anybody's got any final questions before we finish. Um, as I've said, we will, oh, and Nicholas. From attraction perspective, yeah, it, it's, it's true. Yeah, it does make a, a difference from an attraction perspective as well, doesn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. The, the, the thing that I found with a lot of our, our, our clients is um, some of the hardest parts is how, how do you bottle up the great conversations where someone says, I love working in this environment. And I, and I, and I have to think about it myself and my own organization talking about this. Actually, how do we attract the next round of talent to come to us? And actually having people share those shout outs and those magic moments, suddenly as part of your talent acquisition strategy, you've got quotes <laughs> from groups of people, from individuals that are generally saying amazing things about the organization that you wouldn't hear about if it wasn't on a particular board or forum. So I think there's so many different ways that you can think about how you take those magic moments those comments that are really really positive and how you share them externally because i think you know the world that we work in particularly the younger generations they want honesty they want transparency and if we're going to attract the next the next group of people yes there's a balance of flexibility and how they're going to want to work but equally the organization has to work in a way in which it works for them and it's about being uh, balanced and, and, and taking the time to share with people why the organization is good what the key point of the organization is what's expected of them and I think from an a, attraction point of view, as, as Louise has mentioned, they, they absolutely wear their, their heart on their sleeve in terms of everything they do. And I think mm -hmm. there'll be a 500 advocates within Wigley College that are all staff members that, that feel honest about saying that. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a, a key point there, because, again, don't underestimate the power of, of the network and the voice. And, and particularly if you're a, a, a community based organisation, how, how quickly word gets out. Um, so again, Nicola's got, got a really good point in, in the chat there um, uh, around that. But, you, you know, it never ceases to surprise me where I'll have a conversation with somebody and they will drop in. Oh, I was talking to such a body, you know, such a body that was saying this about the college. I was talking to such a body about this who was saying, you, you know, great things about the college. Um, so and, and that's the thing that you can't really control. But they are your greatest advocates are all your staff aren't they so as they get out there they will sit next to people on the train or in the supermarket or happen to be in the pub and have a conversation wherever it might be but they are your greatest advocates and mm -hmm. and a lot of organizations can perhaps overlook that uh, and 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 the power that 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 collective group have uh, in in the say of, of truly what it's like to work in in your organization and be part of that team yeah and reputation is so important isn't it and and as, as nicholas said that that brand perception as well especially if people have been building something up for a long time it can quickly fall down if you get something very wrong but and, and us for us for us on the charter team as well you know employee voice and engagement is one of our seven characteristics obviously why we're having the, the conversation today and you know we do try to kind of get behind that when we start looking at particularly those organizations that are going for the member status, we do peel behind things and, and, and look. So, you know, having having good endorsements uh, always helps to kind of strengthen kind of evidence for that particular area as well. And and we ask a lot of questions of a lot of people as well. So, um, you know, yeah, we do, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, so it is very, very important. So I'm just conscious that we're now at 10 to win and we normally finish these at around this time. So um, we've not had any more questions pop in, but I'm sure that if people have got any questions that they want to raise with uh, with Michael or with Louise afterwards, or you want to have a quiet conversation, we can facilitate those for you. And we'll certainly get the information out there in terms of um, the, re the report that Michael's produced, obviously any um, 
information on the, the Stripe uh, product as well. Michael just put the website there again as well. Um, and obviously, I'm sure Louise would be happy to speak to anybody, wouldn't you? If, or Joe as well. Um, yeah. Who wants to know a bit very more? Very happy. Or connect on LinkedIn. We're quite active over LinkedIn. So yeah, very happy people to to connect with us in in any any way. Happy to have a chat. Brilliant. So before we kind of move on to our final slides, I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to, to Michael and Louise for this afternoon. Um, it's been a really nice uh, discussion to have, uh, always an interesting topic and uh, your contributions have been absolutely fantastic. So, so thank you for that. And before we go as well, I just wanted just to remind um, colleagues about we were actually holding an in-person supporters network event in October. So our first one in, in a long time. Um, and it's to focus on soft skills in hard times. And, and this builds upon a campaign that we've been running in partnership with ACAS and CIPD. So the topic will be linked to people management. Um, and we would encourage you to register for that event if you're keen to attend. We've got a good lineup of speakers there, as you can see. Um, so we think that the, lump, the numbers will kind of start to dwindle quite quickly and, and so tickets are limited for that. So yeah, please sign up for that one. Uh, we'd love to see you there. We'd love to see you in person again because um, it has been a long time. And then also just to remind people as well that we have got our season two of podcasts uh, launching on Monday of next week as well. So the first season of podcasts were received really positively. Um, and so we, we've, we've decided to do a second season and again, some very, very interesting speakers on all of those, uh, again, focusing on our seven characteristics, um, but, you know, really useful for you to listen to and we would welcome feedback on those as well. So I hope you have a good rest of the afternoon. Um, fingers crossed it'll brighten up a little bit, but at the moment it's looking very dull. Um, but yeah, hope you have uh, a good rest of the uh, day and a good weekend as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.